Hi, I'm Martin Bedford. I'm a novelist and I'm the author of the story A Capsule of Time, which was specially commissioned uh, for Wellington College. Well, this story was slightly uh, different to the, the way I would usually write because it was commissioned. So I was approached by uh, Tom Wayman, the head of English at, at Wellington College, to write this, or to write a story. He didn't say what the story should be or what it should be about. The brief was quite open, really. It was, uh, it was to be set at the school and uh, take place here, involving people at the school. Um, and it was to be a mystery of some kind. But that, that was the only brief I've been given so it was quite quite open really so so usually I would have an idea for a story and work on the idea and build up the ideas before I began writing it but here I had to come up with something to order almost but uh, but as it happened I'd got an idea in my mind about a novel I was planning on writing about someone who discovers a time capsule um, and, and, and that leads to other things happening as a result of it. And I'd been mulling it over as an idea for a novel, but it didn't really have enough legs to be a full-length novel. Um, and when Tom suggested uh, doing a story for one end, I thought, well, maybe I could turn that into a short story, because I think there'd, there'd be enough there for a short story. So that, that's how the, the idea came around, anyway. The idea for writing the story in a series of instalments to be read during the school day was, was suggested by, uh, by Tom Wayman uh, because he thought that would be a, a great way of, of making a celebration of a story th throughout an entire day, uh, which I thought was a terrific idea. Um, it goes back to the, some of the uh, early ideas of, of novel writing. People like Dickens and Wilkie Collins used to write their, their novels in instalments in, in newspapers and journals. and um, It was great for me to, to go back to that traditional way of, of writing a story to be read in a, a sequential way like that. Um, what I thought would be particularly good with a story like this was if I could create a sort of cliffhanging ending to each of the instalments um, that, that that would build the idea that, that people were desperate to want to read the next bit really that was what I was trying to achieve that uh, um, I mean I, I try and leave each chapter in a novel ending in a way that people want to read more um, but, but I could really go for it with this story and give, give people something that would make them almost disappointed that it would be another hour before they could read the next uh, instalment I mean whether I've achieved that I don't know but that was the intention anyway um, I, I don't know if I have a message or a meaning in the story as such. I, I don't tend to write fiction with a message or a me meaning in mind, certainly not in the foreground. I'll have themes and ideas that I want to sort of evolve organically from the story or from the characters, but they're very much there for the reader to, to find or not. Um, I, I, I hate, as a reader, I hate feeling that the author's banging me over the head with their message or their theme in some way, so I try and keep that very much in the background. But I suppose if there is a, um, an idea behind this story, it's that, that a, an institution like this, uh, um, um, a sort of boarding school within its own grounds, there's a certain insularity or isolation of a place like this that you can almost forget that the outside world's there sometimes. Um, and, and when I looked at the map of, of Wellington College when I came here to do my research, um, the, the map shows the, the grounds and the perimeter and everything outside of it is just white. Um, as, if, as if it's not there, um, which is perfectly reasonable for a map, obviously, because it's not meant to be a map of these other places. But I, that, that stuck the idea in my head of having a, having, having a, a, a sort of an isolated community or an institution as, as a setting for a story. So one of the themes is this idea of uh, isolation and introspection and to what extent we look at the outside world when we, when we exist in a, in a small sort of capsule like that, really. Um, th there's a, a reference, uh, an intertextual reference to Alice in Wonderland in, uh, in early on in the story, which was intentional. Um, quite a few of the, the references in the story relate to other texts. I mean, for example, the, the name of Alice, the character, is, is a reference to Alice in Wonderland. Max, the, the male hero, is a reference to the character in um, Where the Wild Things Are. Um, which is a, a sort of children's picture book. Um, there are various other references. Mr. Carroll is a reference to a teacher called Mr. Carroll uh, fairly early on in the, in, the, in the book, in the story, and that's a relation to Lewis Carroll. Uh, these are all references to, to children's or teenage fiction that, that deal with portals in some way or, or the passage from one kind of world to another. Um, quite a lot of, of children's fiction in particular deals with this idea of you know, the, the, the wardrobe in Narnia, where you enter a wardrobe and come out in this magical world. So I've, I very much like the idea of, of portals or magical entrances from one world to another. Um, and as you'll discover as this story goes on, the, the, the time capsule that is dug up from the ground has a, um, a sort of, a, it works as a portal device in a sense to take us from one uh, state or situation into another where things become rather strange. So all of those references to other texts or to characters' names or to authors' names is a sort of way of paying homage to other writers who've, who've done that sort of thing in the past. 
my advice uh, to anyone who's interested in becoming a writer themselves would be don't do it if you want to make lots of money because it's not a career that uh, leads to crocks of gold unless you're J.K. Rowling or Anthony Horowitz or people like that. So for most writers, most of the time, uh, you don't earn a full-time living from your writing. So I would never recommend it as a career path uh, to pay the bills. But what I would say is that to be a, a writer, you really want to love writing, to love stories, to love storytelling, to love working with characters. If you're going to work on a novel for a year or 18 months or two years or longer um, and get up and sit at your keyboard every day and write, you've really got to love what you do and, and love the process of putting words onto a page and creating characters and telling stories. And, and if, if you don't love it, then, then don't do it really.